This video is brought to you by Squarespace. For years, the US has been very dominant in the air with its battle-proven fighters like the F-15, F-16 and F-18, along with the King of the Skies and for a long time the only fifth generation fighter in service, the F-22. There simply wasn't a serious answer to the US fifth generation of fighter jets from any other competitor on the market up until recent years. Now after the troublesome development of the F-35 fighter, the US is looking to move above and beyond the competition, and by that I mean completely new generation of fighters. Meet the next generation of air dominance, the jet fighter of the future. Before hopping all the way to the sixth generation, let's have a look back at history and how the US classified the first four generations of fighter jets. The first generation was jet propulsion. It was the breakthrough technology that essentially defined what would become known as a fighter jet in the first place. The second generation was defined by swept wings, range finding radar and infrared guided missiles. For the third generation, it was all about supersonic flight, pulse radar and missiles that could engage opponents beyond visual range. The fourth generation is famous for the introduction of multi-role jets, implementing fly-by-wire controls and the focus of BVR air-to-air -air combat and agility. Further post-Cold War development created the so-called 4 Plus, or as some like to call it, the 4 Double Plus generation, which is focused on reduced radar signature, true multi-role capabilities along with advanced avionics, and weapon systems like on board the Rafale, the Eurofighter or the Russian Su-35S. Speaking of the Russians, they're also working on a new version of the MiG, the MiG-41. But this information wasn't easy to find out because they don't have a website for this top secret project. Something that you can avoid. Looking for a website for a business, project or even an aviation themed YouTube channel just like the one you're watching? Then Squarespace is your answer. Squarespace websites are already optimized for mobile phones, have the ability to run powerful email campaigns, and they have a fantastic e-commerce tech built right into their framework, getting you into business right away. Plus, they have all the SEO tools that you will need to appear in the top results of Google. Trust me, Squarespace is the best. To launch your own site, go to www.squarespace.com found and get 10% off your first site and domain. Back to the show. The US became the first country to introduce an operational fifth generation fighter with it did so with the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor in 2005. There was one thing that set the fifth generation of fighter jet apart from the fourth generation, stealth. That's why stealth capabilities are central to the design philosophy of the F-22 Raptor. These aircraft prioritize stealth from day one, that is, from the conceptual design phase, rather than seeking ways to reduce radar signature after they had designed the whole plane in the shop. The result was a multi-role fighter that would be able to do hit and run missions behind enemy lines and with either no or minimal losses, completing its mission goals, striking critical enemy targets in either air or on the ground. These fighter jets also included active electronic scanning array radars and engines that are powerful enough to cruise above the speed of sound without the need of afterburners. The downside of fifth generation aircraft, however, is although they're able to carry weapons and fuel externally should their need arise, that doing that will instantly make them less stealthy. And without full on stealth capabilities, the aircraft could literally be considered more sleek looking versions of fourth generation jets. And that's a major letdown. As already stated, a sixth generation or class of fighter jets beyond the fifth was inevitable. 
There is an understanding that aerial combat of the future will have less of an emphasis on one-to-one -one dogfights or even brute aerial superiority. Rather, the focus and role of the new jet would be a part of an integrated system of manned and unmanned aircraft, ground troops, satellites, or AWACS planes, depending on the nature of the task at hand. The idea behind the integration of manned and unmanned aircraft is that there would be only one pilot operating two or more aircraft at a time. UAVs would not be controlled from the ground and the AI would be able to perform basic tasks commanded by the pilot, allowing the pilot to focus on the priority objectives with the drones either providing recon, support or drawing enemy fire away. These roles would allow our hero pilot to slip in unnoticed or at least face more and softer threats whilst performing their missions. One of these drones could be the XQ-58 Valkyrie or the Loyal Wingman that we've previously covered on the channel and that you can watch right here. Integral to this digital sophistication will be the use of virtual cockpits. With these, pilots will view their control panels via helmet-mounted displays or HMDs, which will afford the pilot 360-degree vision with AI-enhanced battlefield awareness, technology already being implemented in the F-35. They might also implement some of the technology currently in development like airborne high energy beam weapons, or simply called lasers. And no, this is not a joke or some sci-fi babble that I'm using to try and get views, because the airborne laser platforms have been developed ever since the Cold War, with the best examples being the Soviet Bereave A-60 and the US Boeing YAL-1. More on them on a future video, so click that subscribe button. Implementation of these weapons could be either for the protection of the aircraft or for tactical purposes such as blinding enemy sensors, satellites and more. Apart from all of those, the multi-role 6th gen fighter will still have to tick all the boxes defined by the previous generation, like stealth capability, supersonic speed without afterburners, and the ability to strike multiple targets at a time. So what will actually be the 6th generation jet? The US Navy launched a 6th generation FAXX program back in 2008, with the Air Force following up with its own next generational tactical aircraft in 2010. It was the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, that was designated to lead the development of these next generation aircraft. They decided in 2013 that both of these concepts need to be brought together, even if this approach was actually criticized by some of the analysts. By 2015, the Air Force and Navy requirements were formally integrated and a joint focus on AI systems and a common airframe. The plan by the Air Force was the development and acquisition of a 6th generation fighter jet through its Penetrative Counter Act or PCA program that will replace existing fighters such as the Boeing F-15 platforms and the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor. The initial goal was this jet to take to the sky by the 2030s although we now consider that a rather optimistic deadline. The plan is that the NGAD aircraft will join just three other fighter jets to comprise the US Air Force and United States Navy Air Fleet, specifically the Lockheed Martin F-35, the Boeing F-A-18 Super Hornet, and the Boeing F-15E, as well as I should mention its further development variant, the F-15EX. This will actually see the demise of the F-22 Raptor, the most capable fighter of the Air Force, although a problematic and expensive one. As of the end of 2021, Boeing, Lockheed Martin and Northrop have all announced 6th generation aircraft development projects of their own. So the race is on to get this into the sky. Military analysts were taken by surprise when Dr. Will Roper, the acquisition executive for the US Air Force, announced in September 2020 that the Air Force had already flown a full-scale flight demonstrator as part of its program. 
Experts were genuinely surprised given that funding for the project had only been granted by Congress in 2018, which meant that the program was advancing at an unusually fast pace for a fighter jet concept. But this makes sense when you examine the project in a little bit more detail. An important feature of the program is the way in which it's project managed. Unlike other previous fighter jet projects, many of which went wildly over budget and took many additional years to complete, this time it was decided that there would be a split between design, production, and sustainment. This meant that whatever company designs the aircraft will not be awarded the production contract, whilst the production company, in turn, will not get the contract to maintain the aircraft once it's in active service. The focus is instead on high-tech manufacturing centers capable of producing anything produced in digital format rather than having a dedicated and very expensive aircraft factory. It's also supposed to minimize the chances of one company screwing up the entire project. It's also worth noting that Dr. Will Roper was rather cagey about the project when he made this announcement back in September 2020. For example, Roper declined to comment on how many of these prototype aircraft had been flown or which defense contractors had even been involved in the project. He also refused to say when the first flight occurred and perhaps in the most galling aspect of this announcement, he refused to divulge even a single aspect of the aircraft's design, not to mention the aircraft's principal mission or whether it would be manned or optionally manned. Roper wouldn't even confirm whether or not the prototype could fly at hypersonic speeds or if it had better stealth capabilities. According to Roper, all of these characteristics were frankly, in his opinion, beside the point. The bottom line is, is we still actually don't know much about this project and what is concrete or verifiable. What we do know is that several other countries have sixth generational aircraft programs on the go or in the pipeline, with the most prominent ones being the Japanese Mitsubishi FX, the British BAE Tempest, and jointly developed European Future Combat Air System. There are also other aircraft in development which may or may not be true sixth gen aircraft, creating maybe another plus generation, finding itself between five and six. So the United States may yet find itself with some stiff competition from allies and foes alike with its sixth generation fighter jet design. But I like to think that it may yet be the most furious generation of fighter jets ever seen. And speaking of seeing things early, if you want to see these videos early on Found and Explained, then I suggest you become either a channel member or a Patreon supporter. You not only get to see the videos early, chat with me directly, but also suggest your own ideas in our Discord server. So I hope to see you there and can't wait to see you in the next video.